Ladies and gentlemen, very welcome to our, our speech. Um, my name is Pat Culhan, as Paula said. I'm the Hurling Development Administrator for Limerick City, and to my right here is uh, my esteemed colleague, Brian Ryan, the Games Manager in Kilkenny. And today, what we're going to talk about is implementing modes of, uh, of Go Games, case studies for Limerick City and for Kilkenny. And firstly, I'm just going to talk about the work that I've done in Limerick City over the last uh, five years. And uh, for the second half of the speech today, I'm going to hand you over to Brian. Okay, so Limerick City, progress and motion, that's quite true to the word. And, and, and I want to show you um, what I mean by that. Okay, so just getting into it uh, straight away, what is my presentation about today? Okay, what is Brian's presentation about today? It's about how Go Games has been used to change the mindset for the betterment of juvenile Gaelic games in Limerick City. Okay, Go Games is not just a set of rules. Okay, it's, 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 it's an ethos or a belief system that can in, that help instill trust uh, into primary schools and clubs for the betterment of Gaelic games in, 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 in your particular area. So just to give you a very brief over, overview of the area that I work in, um, I, 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 my, my, my 90% of my work is within Limerick City. There's 15 clubs in the city and the suburbs, okay? There's 36 primary schools, that's including all girls schools, uh, uh, mixed schools and boys schools, and there's 10,000 children, okay? Quite a lot of children. Uh, and we've over half the population of the whole county in the little patch of land marked there in red. Okay, and I suppose uh, when I was appointed, or why I was appointed in 2005 was to address the decline of hurling in this area, okay? Um, there, there, there was serious problems in Limerick. Um, some people uh, said that there wasn't, that hurling is as strong as ever and everything is fine and they were shoving it under the carpet and everything was grand. Uh, other people thought that hurling is dead and gone forever. Uh, of course, that's not the case. As long as you have people, as long as you have clubs, as long as you have a bit of hope, well then there's always hope for progression. Okay, and again, I'm going to show you that that, that was the, uh, the case in Limerick. But the first thing I did, and I suppose about, it took me about six months to, maybe even nine months, was to, to let pe or to, to, to kind of, I suppose, talk to people, listen to, their, listen, listen to the problems that, was going, that were going on, but to, to try and portray the fact that there was a general problem with the development of hurling inside Limerick City, okay? The, 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 there was a win at all costs attitude which, 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 which was instilled in clubs playing internal, divisional and county championships, winning silverware inside Limerick, but as soon as we went across the border to Clare, Galway, the Kilkennys, the Corks, we, we, we were failing miserably as a county, okay? Besides a blip of 321 All-Irelands, which I'll come back to in a little while. We, we, we were failing. Internally, we, we thought we were great, when we stepped across our, our own border, we were not producing the hurlers at the grade from under 14 right through to minor and, 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 and through to senior. There was faulty products coming off the assembly line and, and we had to look at what we were doing along the way. Again, a win at all costs attitude uh, was, 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 um, was, was prevalent there. And I suppose since 2005, for the first six or nine months, I wanted to uh, prove to people that there was a, there was a problem inside Limerick City. And, and, you know, I came up against a lot of resistance, but I think of eventually, before we tried to solve the problem, uh, uh, in terms of the lack of development, the lack of number of children playing hurling, hurling in Limerick City, we had to firstly accept that we had a problem. And I think I achieved, um, I, I, I achieved that. So, the first place you should always look in terms of developing Gaelic games is the primary school, okay? And if you just, if you look at the participation levels here in the little table, at under 10 level in, in the Limerick City coming a month ago, uh, league, there was eight clubs and uh, 118 children playing in a very competitive tournament in, in, in the Limerick City League, okay? It was, it was, it was A grade, sometimes there was, a, there was a B competition, and it was silverware, it was win at all costs. Now, out of the, the, the 36 schools in Limerick City, uh, that, that, that was an absolute tragedy. Uh, there, was only, there was less than a third, um, uh, just a little over a quarter of the schools playing for silverware every year. The strong schools, the big schools, um, were, wanted to win their silverware and from the outside you'd pick up the paper and you'd see X, Y or Z school won a cup and a trophy and you'd say everything's fine with Limerick City Harlan. It wasn't. They're the facts. 2006, eight, eight, eight schools, 118 children. Um, by 2010 we had that up to 22 schools and 484 children. That's in the leagues, the coming of months leagues. 
they, they were playing regular games uh, from February right through to June, okay? And we, that was an increase of 310%. Okay, how did we, how did we go about um, increasing the participation levels? Okay, the first thing we did was that we introduced a, a program of Go Games. Okay, that it took a lot of convincing at the start. Um, I was met with a lot of um, contempt and, you know, I even fell out with some people, if I'm totally honest with you, because I had a sincere and utter belief that Go Games was the way forward, that the child-centered approach is the way forward. But uh, we, 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 we got it passed at the, the Common One School AGM that we, we try Go Games on a, on a, on a one-year um, basis. And, 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 and I'd say by, by about the second round of blitzes, I had a lot of teachers coming up to me. I, I still have two letters, actually, one email and a letter writing me, uh, teachers writing me, telling me, um, thanks a million for running the Blitz. Go Games is great. You know, we, we brought the whole class with us today as, a, as opposed to bringing your top 10 hurlers to a Blitz. They brought the whole class. There was more kids playing games. And, and I think that, that the primary schools are interested in what is good for the child. They'll embrace and they'll take on board something that is child-centered and that promotes the, 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 the betterment of the children. Um, another thing we did in terms of increase the participation levels was empowering the teachers. They, 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 are, they are the people, generally speaking, who have the, 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 um, the opportunity to introduce children to Gaelic games uh, in, the, in the first instance. They, they, they have the first point of contact to, to our, our children uh, in terms of introducing Gaelic games. And, I suppose I, I, I would have supported children. There was a lot of good work that went on before me with Noel Hartigan inside in Limerick City. There was a very good relationship built up with the teachers. It was easy for me to come in and carry on that good work and, and, and continue to support the teachers, listen to them, um, provide a little bit of coaching, use the, like, the, the likes of the Fundu coaching resource, run regular workshops, make them feel appreciated. Let them know that you're there as an official from the GA to um, say that you're doing a good job and I'm here to help. And I think that was a very, very important thing. In all fairness to Limerick County Board, in 2006, they invested quite a lot of money in four part-time positions. There was 25 hours a week, starting in September, right through to June. Um, it, it was more or less uh, hurling coaching. There was a little bit of Gaelic football as well, but we, 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 we just set about targeting first. And this came from the primary schools now. We didn't impose this upon the schools. We, I, we met them like I met you here. And they, we targeted first, second, and third class. as. With, with mostly with uh, Potty Butler's Fundamentals program. And uh, we, we set about just coaching the children, introducing them <laughs> to hurling in a fun and a safe environment. And that led to an absolute explosion in participation levels, mostly at under 10. And you can see it there at the top, what I mean by that. Times have changed, the economy has changed, money isn't as, 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 as around as much, unfortunately, as it used to be. So we, we diverted the funds and the energy of the four part-time coaches into the School Club Link program, okay? And a lot of you will be familiar with a School Club Link program. It's under the stewardship of our games manager, Noel Hartigan, in Limerick, and it has proven to be absolutely a, a key element to the increasing and the maintaining of, of high participation levels in Limerick over the last year. We have 20 local clubs, uh, 20 local club coaches in the, in the city and suburbs um, working, working with Joe Downs in the inner city and myself, and, and every club um, in, in Limerick City and suburbs, the whole area, the 15 clubs and plus a, a few others um, outside of that again, the whole area that myself and Jar and Noel cover is, is uh, you know, they're, they're up and running with this program and it's absolutely vital. If there's anything else you take out of the, the session that, I, that, that I'm talking here for the next 10 minutes at is, 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 is that you have, to, you have to have to have a strong link between your primary school and your local club. They cannot work independently in isolation from each other. And it's very particularly difficult in the inner city where there sometimes is a crossover of children from different clubs coming in. But, you know, it, 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 there's always ways around it, okay? And the recipe for success, uh, or the foundation for the recipe of success, is that the local school has to be on good terms with the local school principal and our, the local teacher or teachers that are willing to give up their free time to coach children and promote Gaelic games and introduce them to hurling and football inside their local schools. The link is important. And what we found with the four part-time coaches, they, they were doing a fantastic job, but some of the clubs were lazy. They didn't take on board the good work that was being done by the, by the, by the, by the four part-time coaches, and the huge participation levels were not being transferred by numbers. Hence, the School Club Link program came into fruition in the last year, and it's working really, really well.
Okay, another thing we did was by like, strengthening Limerick City coming to Munskill administration structures. New chairman, positive, positive guy, brought in po other positive people around him. Uh, there was a record number, um, I remember in 2006, when he went to become a chairman, there was a record number of, of schools. Every one of them turned up to vote him in as chairman, and he's still there, and he's doing mighty work, Dennis O'Connor. And Myrna Bennett as secretary. There's a really productive little team in the city coming to Munskull who are running initiatives outside of a program of games, like coaching workshops um, and, and uh, other coach education uh, days for, for teachers in terms of uh, promoting hurling and Gaelic football in Limerick City. And it's very, very important to have strong administration structures. And I suppose the most humbling thing there for me about my time in, the, in Limerick City over the last five years is that five new schools joined Limerick City coming to Munskull since 2006. Uh, there's five brand new schools that um, never had a hurley inside their gate. I remember going to one of them in particular and always you'd find really old hurleys inside in the school, a school closet for the PE equipment. And th this particular school is about the only school uh, in, in, in Limerick City, Limerick School Project that never had hurleys. But my God, have they embraced the, the, the Go Games ethos, the, the, the co Limerick Coaching and Games ethos. And, and, and now they have a school team at under 13, and, and, and forevermore hurling, please God, will be played inside in that school. So five new schools came on board inside in Limerick City. Okay, so just moving on to the clubs, it's pretty much a parallel. There's no rocket science. What we did inside in the primary schools was a parallel to what we did in the clubs in terms of increasing the participation levels. So if you look again at, at the nursery age group, this is uh, six and seven years of age, okay, uh, maybe even five to an extent. In 2006, there was five clubs out of the 15 in the city and 115 uh, running with the nursery program, to the best of my records. And in 2010, we got that up to 10 clubs and there's 268 children participating in, in the, in the um, nursery program. That's an increase of 133%. Now that figure there will also tell you that things aren't perfect inside Limerick. That's two thirds, it's 10 of the 15 clubs. We still have another third to go in five years trying to introduce a nursery program uh, in the clubs and some of them still haven't bought in so that we still have a long, uh, a long way to go but we're definitely on the right road. Um, just to run through how we increase the participation levels, levels in the clubs, go games. 2006, um, 2006, uh, I, 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 a thing, a competition called on Fail on Or, uh, for all intents and purposes, it was a, 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 an under 10 county championship. Two coaches went to blows, beat the head off each other. I, I witnessed it myself. I said, we need to change this. We need to change it drastically. This is not the way forward. These are, this is not the example that we want to set for our children. In, in, in Limerick City or, or anywhere for that matter. So it took, it took a lot of convincing again, but got the, got the Go Games uh, model introduced, um, put, a regular, put in regular blitzes, uh, a regular league program. Um, I think clubs relaxed a little bit uh, in terms of, they weren't just trying to win silverware all the time. They actually tried to, they, I think it opened their eyes a little bit as to actually the, the skill development side of hurling. And I, I, it, it definitely proved to be a success because in 2009, we introduced um, a, a, a plan called lifting the treaty, okay, and we definitely need to be lifted. We need to be lifted in Limerick higher than probably any other county or, or as, as much as any other county in, in, in the country. And, and it's a fantastic plan um, with, with really sincere um, aims and objectives. And, and, and basically they are to increase the quantity and quality of hurling and Gaelic football at juvenile age level inside in Limerick. Okay, it's all the dissolving of divisional board and Oaks. Um, and, and, you know, you're talking about 50, 60 years of tradition there. And, you know, it, it introduced Go Games right throughout Limerick. And that was, geez, I, I was so happy when that was voted through. And it was voted through almost unanimously in Limerick, despite uh, a lot of um, opposition at the start. We, w we went about, myself, Noel Hartigan, the other full-time staff in Limerick, and some of the committee went into clubs who had a problem with it. I remember going into my own club. The chairman told me, not a hope. This won't get through. Lifting the treaty, forget about it. Uh, within, within an hour and a half, 20 people at the meeting, 17 put up their hand in favour of it. The chairman still kept his hand down, by the way, but that's another story. <laughs> um, increasing the quantity and quality of, of, of coaching participation. Coaching, co co coaching, I think coaching has actually become a, a quite a fashionable thing. It's, 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 I remember after in 2007, after trying to work really intensely with coaches and trying to, I suppose, not so much put them on a pedestal, but I like the teachers, appreciate their role and appreciate that the difficulties um, involved in putting yourself forward at an AGM to say, I will be the coach of X, Y, or Z underage team. And, you know, in, in 2007, I remember at the, at the, when, when coaching games launched the Fundu pack, the, the coaching resource pack, 
I, I, I just sent out a, an email to the clubs and I made phone calls and I sent text messages and I called the people's houses and I did everything and anything I could to promote the launch of this fundu pack and we decided to hold it inside an LIT and um, this was just within the 15 city clubs plus one other Maru Boher, thanks to a friend of mine sitting down there. So 16 clubs came into it and 120 coaches for six Monday nights, I think it was, turned up in LIT and, and there's a few of them sitting here today. And, and that, that, that was a clear indication to me as to the, 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 the interest and the goodwill that, that, was, that was there uh, in terms of we want to take this fun do coaching um, pack on, on, on board. And we, we had the likes of James O'Connor, Joey Carton and John Bergen there and, and different people coming in to, to, to talk to these people and concentrated on the 20-odd the skills of, of the, of the Fundu pack. But 120 coaches, that, that, that's, that's, where we, that's where we were in 2007. And, it, and it's, st it's, still, it's still getting better. Um, what else we did to increase participation levels was, um, it, we, we noticed, and it, is, it isn't rocket science, that the number of children playing in the schools uh, saw uh, an increase in the number playing in the clubs, not initially, and especially since, it, since Noel put in the, the club school link program, um, we've seen that the participation levels are now on par with the schools, are really coming in on board, uh, using the go games, blitzes, and so on and so forth, three or four teams, uh, and, and there's, there's a huge participation level increase in the schools, and that now is, is, very, is quite evident inside in the clubs as well. Um, and, and, and again, <laughs> with lifting the treaty, uh, we, we looked at who was making the decisions and, 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 and we set about putting the right people in place to have capable juvenile administration structures that, that applies to each club and the support we give them in the games development staff in Limerick. And, and also, there has, to be, there has to be leadership there, which I'll, I'll come back to and I'll touch on, 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 on quite briefly. And uh, this, this I, I, I put my, my bottom dollar that I, I am within 2% either way accurate on this figure, okay? And, and just trailing through my records, it took me two days to, to actually put, finalize this figure together. But 1,454 boys um, in 2006 were playing hurling inside in Limerick City and the 15 clubs inside in Limerick City. Okay. Uh, in 2010, this number jo ro jo uh, jumped to 2,678. That's an increase of 84%. And you have to look at this word here, okay? Regular participation levels. It's not just a flash in the plan blitz that we ran inside in a particular club. 600 kids turn up. Oh, there's loads of kids playing hurling inside in Limerick City. Things are great. I could write an article for the paper. I could go on to Limerick Radio on a Saturday morning. Limerick City hurling's fine. We have 600 kids playing in a blitz. Every time I pick up a paper, and, they, and, and unless they mention the word regular or they can prove to me in some way that, that, that there's a continuation of this participation, I, I get, I, it kind of annoys me, to be honest. So that figure there is the figure that I'm talking about in relation to children that are actually playing hurling week in, week out with their schools and with their clubs as part of the, 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 the Go Games Leagues and Blitzes uh, program that we, that, we, that we have put in place over the last number of years. Okay, uh, Go Games, okay. Uh, it, it, basically, some people see it as a set of rules, okay. I see it as an opportunity to change, uh, to change the mindset of, of of what we're, what we're doing. And I, I think I've, I've spoken about that in great detail already. I definitely grew up in a win-at-all-costs culture within Limerick. And, you know, I was, I, I, at the peak of my career, I played under 14 in the Tony Forest in 1994. We lost to Kilkenny below in uh, Mount Sine. And uh, that, that was it. I, I peaked at, 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 at under 14. And, and coincidentally, and I hope John Landers is here, a brilliant man, who was the brainchild behind most good things in Limerick over the last number of years, but also the three all Ireland under 21 win um, that, 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 that happened in the late 90s. And only one of the 25, I looked at the picture a few years ago, and only one of the, the, the Limerick under 14 team in 1994, and I would have been straight through to the teams that won the three, two of the three years of the 20, under 21 all Irelands that Limerick won. Only one player from that on Tony Farsell panel went on and represented Limerick in, in any of those two of the first two all earned under 21s that they won. And I, I thought it was a, quite, a, quite a staggering um, a figure. In, in, in addition to that, and most of you will, a lot of you will notice that any team that's won the Tony Forrestal uh, at under 14, four years later, to the best of my knowledge, has never won, went on to win, win, uh, win, win, a, win a, a minor all Ireland. And I suppose the, the win at all costs attitude I know what it's like to be left on, on, on a bench, particularly at, at, at inter-county level growing up in Limerick. I know what it's like to be left on the bench. It's not nice. 
Children have to earn the, the, the right to, to represent their club. You know, they have to be some way committed. But, you know, the win at all costs attitude was so prevalent in Limerick that we thought we were brilliant by X, Y, or Z club winning an under 14 county championship. When they, when they, went, when they went to the FELA, we were seeing that they just weren't able to compete. Uh, that, that's changing ever so slightly, slowly but surely. Uh, but, you know, the, the, the win at all costs um, attitude was, was definitely not working in Limerick. So, go games, okay? Paddy spoke in great detail, and better than I ever will, in, in, in relation to what motivates children um, in, in terms of playing, 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 uh, playing, playing Gaelic games. And uh, what, what, what Paddy said, you know, he, he mentioned a lot of that earlier, but um, the, the, the go games, the go, the go games was used, I utilized it, I utilized, I utilized not just the set of rules, um, I utilized the, the ethos that came at go games to, 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 bring, out a, to, to bring a bit of, bit of trust into Limerick, to, to have good relation, relationships between the local clubs in, in the area. And just finally to sum up, I suppose, the different, uh, the different areas that I talked about here today, okay, uh, first you'll see primary schools, okay, this is, this is the bedrock, it is the foundation, it is the introduction of Gaelic games to children. If you can get high numbers inside in your primary schools playing right across the board, okay, then you have an opportunity to transfer those kids into the local club. Okay, the club, they, develop, they, they, can, they can develop a love for the Gaelic games here, increase their, their, their skill level, okay, and, and, and like we have such a productive unit of clubs in Limerick because we linked it into the primary schools. We got it right in the primary school, then we got it right in the club. Uh, in relation to schools of excellence, we have under 10 and 11 academies, under 12, and, and on all the way up along. And I, I sincerely believe, and I, I debated with Brian whether I put this in or not, but there is a valve, there has to be a valve for the more interested coach who wants to better himself, and for, I suppose, some of the more interested children at, at, at that age group. I sincerely believe that, and, 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 and they're, they're, there's a little programs that we run. They're not elitist by nature, but they just have a little opportunity to play at, at a high level, especially lads from smaller or weaker clubs. Coach education, okay. Everything I've done pretty much over the last five years inside Limerick City has, has been through the medium of education. It's changing the mindset, using Go Games to change the mindset for the betterment of, 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 of our clubs, of our schools, having a child-centered approach. You know, we, we, need, we, we had to accept in Limerick that we, we, had a, we had a huge amount of tradition, a huge amount of pride. We had structures there. There was Mick Mackey and there was the Eamon Cregans and, you know, we, we, had a, we had a huge base of tradition to start from, which was a huge advantage. But we, 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 we faded out. We faded out. We lost five All-Irelands since 1980. Year I was born, we've lost five All Irelands. I've seen, I've seen three or four. I've seen nearly. I didn't see it in 1980, but I'm trying to think. I think I've seen three or four of them anyway. And and and, and you know, we we, we 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 had to accept the fact that we needed to know more about best coaching practice. We needed to get back to basics and and, and get children performing the basic skills of the game uh, in order for them to be better hurlers in the future. Um, and, and and at the basis of all this, we needed to have a, a capable administration. Again, lifting the treaty has addressed that. And, you know, we're definitely on the right road in Limerick. But just, just le let me leave you with these words. If, if there's a problem in relation to the development of hurling or football in your area, accept it, okay? It's not gone and lost forever, okay? And, you know, it, 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 things aren't always, always good if, if you're pretending that they're good. Have a realistic notion as to what the story is. How many children are playing in your school, in your club, in your division, in your county? How many are playing and how many are playing regularly? Okay, if you have a problem, accept it, put a plan, do something about it, and have, make sure that the right people are in the, the, the decision-making committees in terms of producing capable administration. And I suppose the one thing, and I'll leave you with this thought, that I've tried to do in Limerick City is to create a bond of trust between all the units of the association, from club to club, from school to school, from committee, uh, coming to Munskull level to link in with coaching and games and Limerick County Board and Oak. Okay, there has to be trust. If there's no trust, you're, 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 you're on the road to nowhere. But if you have a problem, identify it, do something about it. And in, 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 an, in an area like Limerick City, if we can make it work and we've embraced Go Games the way that we have, I think I've proven and I've shown to you that most certainly you can do it too. Good <laughs> meal